Hey guys, welcome to Living in South Florida Does Not Suck. This is Andrew Burr from the Andrew Burr Group at the Kai's Company. We can't wait to get started. All right, guys, uh, Andrew Burr here from the Kai's Company, uh, your realtor of choice right down here in South Florida, uh, hopefully anyways. Um, so this is our Real Talk segment, supplement of Living in South Florida Does Not Suck. Today we have Andrew Fishman here from Capital Partners Mortgage. He is uh, my lead mortgage partner, I guess you would say. Um, you know, at full transparency, we do use other lenders, but you know, Andrew's got a lot of great programs and we definitely like to use him. So we want to talk to you a little bit about what is going on in the marketplace right now because people never believe me when I tell them. Right now, the marketplace here in South Florida, and you're starting to actually hear it on national news, it's a seller's market. It's a huge seller's market. We're getting multiple offers. It's kind of crazy. I don't know why I've got an actual answer. The reason is, is because an awful lot of people moved during COVID and they all got these wonderful rates at, you know, 3%, 4%, some of them even in the twos, like, you know, the house I bought in Key Largo, I'm at 2.31% with a VA loan. You think I'm giving that up? No, but that's the problem because we have so many people that moved and so many people that are sitting on these mortgages, you know, to make a step up now, let's say that you bought the house, uh, freshly married, no kids. In the past couple of years, you've had a kid. You're like, oh my God, we need a bigger house. Da, da, da. Now you have to go to a uh, you know house that has probably gone up in value a good bit in the past three years. Plus, you're going from a three or four uh, percent interest rate up to a six, seven percent rate. I mean, it's it's a big jump. So, um, if you're thinking about selling your house, if you if you're thinking about you know moving and you want to sell your house, right now is an amazing time to do so. Uh, and we'd love your business, so give me a call. Um, Charlie's going to put up all the information, contact information, and all that kind of stuff on the uh, on the board there, so you'll have that. But Andrew, why don't you talk to me about the lending environment right now? Because I know you know there's you know it's it's tough for everybody right now with lending, but you've got a lot of great programs too that uh, are kind of new and stuff that are helping that quite a bit. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you having me on. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, in terms of programs, I mean, so first and foremost, for any first-time home buyers that are out there, uh, we do have coming on starting July first. We have a uh, it used to be called the Hometown Hero Program, or still is, but that's going to be moving on to where anybody that is a full-time employee in a Florida-based company. Okay. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it's amazing. We'll be eligible for this program to where they can they can get five percent up to thirty five thousand dollars of the loan amount, not purchase price, mm -hmm. uh, to use towards buying a house. Um, and the rates are actually pretty good right now. You can get on a FHA or a conventional or even a VA, but I mean, you probably you know right now in the six percent range, um, you know, but you're getting money to buy a property that is at a zero percent loan. So yeah. understand, it's not where they. It's not a gift. It's not a gift, right? right. They, they, so they're borrowing the funds um, at zero percent. They don't make any payments, and the only time they have to pay it back is if they sell or refinance the property. Right. Um, there are some stipulations if you end up renting out that property down the road as well that they. Can it's yeah, it's for first first time home buyers, and it's and, and it's and it's made to to make homes more affordable for people that you know that need homes. I mean, it's kind of like the VA program. Uh, is set up to get veterans into homes and make purchasing a home as a veteran more affordable. This is basically the same sort of concept, um, and yeah, there are some some you know, stipulations and stuff like that. But in general terms, it's it's a it's amazing in how much of a difference that twenty five to you know or let's say twenty to thirty five thousand dollars can make, especially because a lot of the a lot of the hurdle that people have right now is the upfront cost. Um, you know, it's not the it's not the it's not the monthly cost necessarily. Um, but the upfront cost of buying a home, a lot of people, you know, that really is a big, you know, a large amount. And not everybody can come up with 25% or 20%. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say 25, although there are some places down there, depending on where you're at. If you're going into a condo, some of you got to pay 30% down if you're going to finance. But in general terms, a lot of people, and I think, I think it's changing now, but the traditional model was, oh, we have to have 20% down, you know, to buy. And that's not true. I mean, we have a lot of our... You know, buyers right now are, are getting, you know, three and a half to five percent seems to be more of the norm almost than the uh, than yep. the than the twenty percent or so. You could also do three percent down on a conventional mortgage for a first time home buyer. So Yeah, yeah, three so they have a three, five, ten. So it's three percent conventional, three and a half for an FHA, 
obviously no money down if you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody else typically looking at 5% down on a conventional. Okay. You don't have to be a first time home buyer. So the 20% is kind of like, it's a misnomer. And that, that's, that's what a lot of people think that we've had to do back in the day. And for as long as I've been in the business, we've always had you know, the, the low money down programs. Yeah, well the 3% three, three, three and 5% conventionals are I'd say relatively new. I mean, I didn't start seeing those until maybe five, six years ago. Really, a lot. I mean, I'm sure they were there, but they didn't. Maybe they weren't as popular. But now, could be. Um, and yeah, you know, and obviously, you would want to talk to uh, Andrew about this. And if you want to get qualified for, uh, you know, a loan, uh, his information will be up there as well. You know, let him know you heard about uh, us on the podcast. He'll give you five hundred dollars cash. I'm just kidding. He can't do that. <laughs> um, but uh, we do give discounts. Though. Yeah. yeah so, um, but but the thing is, the funny thing is, is that. Uh, you know, there's so many so many people that, that we deal with now, and those of you that are renting, let me tell you something right now. Those of you that are renting, a lot of you are uh, under the misconception that you cannot afford to buy. You're incorrect. You can't afford to rent anymore. Um, you know, the rents here. So uh, let's go over a mini COVID uh, breakdown. Uh, COVID hits. Everybody says, screw it. We're moving to South Florida. So <laughs> housing prices go up. Um, rent prices went straight up because they got locked down during COVID for a little bit. And then as soon as they got unlocked, they just jumped through the roof. And then all of a sudden, everybody and their brothers come down here. People can't find places to buy. So they're renting, uh, rents go up, 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 uh, you know, housing tails off, starts to go like this. Rents are still going up, 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 up. Uh, housing takes a little bit of a dip and does this, 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 and rent was still going up. Um, and rent is still going up. I mean, it's not nearly as bad as it was, but rents right now are in my, opinion just insane down here uh the other thing is too is that you know I've, I've seen housing prices do whatever they do i've never seen rents come down once they've gone up no um so i think that's gonna be around for a while but some people are living in situations where they're a perfect example uh first time home buyers uh, uh the, i don't say kids but like God, then goyo since he was this big a guy that worked for my my wife has been working for my wife for probably 15 years at least uh you know he got married had kids they're living in a teeny, teeny little place in Lake Worth. They're paying $2,700 a month in rent. And it's like, oh, my God. And then the people are like, oh, we're going to raise your rent again. They're going to put them over $3,000. Of course, I can't. You know, it's crazy. Um, and we ended up moving them to Port St. Lucie, which worked for their schematic. Doesn't work for everybody. But if you're not tied to Palm Beach County right now, we got everybody flocking to Port St. Lucie. Bought them a 1,700-square-foot uh, house. Um, and you know, they've been in there for like three or four months now. They're super happy. They're paying, it's still, you know, it's eight, uh, 1800 or something like that, or maybe around 2000. I can't remember the exact number that they're paying. Uh, but it's like a thousand dollars less than they would have been paying in the little teeny place that they had in Lake Worth. So, um, but there's a lot of people in that situation and it's, I don't know how to get the messaging out more than doing stuff like this. Like guys, you're paying a lot of money. I mean, if you look at what, what you're overpaying, compared to what you would pay for a mortgage in the space of a year, I mean, it's tens of thousands of dollars in a lot of cases. It's crazy, so. Well, you have more to add to that than, than just that. Think about this. What's, you're paying 100% interest yeah, on that rent. it is 100% interest. Yeah, you're paying somebody else's mortgage. You're not, you know, that's that's the crazy thing. You're, you're just throwing the money away. That is a huge part of it, too. Um, yeah, you worry, worry about paying a 6% interest rate or even a 7% interest rate. Like you said, you're paying 100% interest if you're renting. Yep. Um, and we have a lot of programs and, you know, Andrew's, Andrew can take you, like if you are wanting to get out of renting and you just don't know how, have a conversation with him. He's either going to tell you, no, you know what? You really don't have a chance, which I don't know of any, there's, I mean, there are people, unfortunately, that are in that situation, but it's not that many. But for the most part, so here's a roadmap of how to get out of that. Or he might say, you know what? You're very close. This is all you need. That, that, that. Um, he actually has, uh, do you have that program where the renters can improve their credit score by paying a rent on time or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy, they, right? Yeah. That's they could, awesome. they could, um, there it's like rent boost. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens is, is that, um, when they sign up their rent, we get put onto their credit report mm -hmm. and it becomes a trade line. And you know, even if it's done, even if they had it in the past, so they were renting someplace, they can get a history of it, add it on there and it should either you know, not right away, but in a couple months to a year, mm -hmm. you could see your credit go up dramatically. Yeah. Um, you know, if you'd have very little credit or, you know, not a strong history of credit. Yeah. And then there's, there's also some other stuff that, uh, you know, is you know, fairly new to me anyways. I'm sure it's been going on for a while, but um, there's a lot of times where let's say that you know, you're looking to purchase and you're at, I don't know, 
and I'm going I'm to use a bottom level number. No, I'm going to use a mid level number. Let's say you're at 650, but if you get to 675, um, you're going to get a better rate. True. It's a I don't six, know where I jumped. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, it's so they're tiers. Mm -hmm. So you go, let's like in the tier you were talking about, 640 to 659, okay. and then it goes to 660. To six seventy nine, right. six eighty and up. So. Perfect. So, so let's say that you're, you know, you're seven points off or six points off of that next better rate. A lot of times, um, the, you guys can now go in there and do one time adjustments, right? Or you can whatever you do with yeah. you know, what's going to your. Why don't we, you tell them what you do? I, don't know. <laughs> I know, I know generally what it is, but yeah. So typically, what we do is on uh, every client that I get, and I I do a credit analysis for them when we do a, try to do a pre approval. And from there, uh, I'm able to determine if we can get their credit scores up uh, through this credit analysis program. And then from there, I send them, I give them specific information of what items they'd have to pay down or pay off. Mm. Once they do that, they provide us with the documentation, and it's called a rapid rescore. We submit it in, and within three to five days, we'll get a updated report, and. Um, you know, then we run the report, and it should give you a score that is close to where that credit analysis. When I did that, I, uh, it'll, it'll give us a kind of like a range of saying your score should go up to this if you do X, Y, and Z. Right. And it, I do this all the time, and to, to try to get to the client. Like if I have a client with a six seventy score, I've done it where I, okay, where I, what do I, what do I need to do to get to six eighty, and then over seven hundred, and it does. It's it helps them in their pricing of their rates and. Yeah. And that, some of the down, uh, initial money too, right? Like, well, with that, with the first-time homebuyer program, you need a 640 credit score. Yeah, so if you're at 620, right. yeah. you know, we find ways to try to help you get get to that 640. Yeah. You know? So, and also think about this too. When you're talking about renters, I mean, you're paying most of the time. You're paying first, last, and security. Yeah, that's like a down payment. It's a down payment. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. And this, and here's the, here's the thing, and this is what a lot of people also don't understand, especially people come from up north and from New York and stuff like that. It doesn't cost you a penny to talk to me or to him. And to figure out where you're at and what we can do, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, in my in my case, if you're buying, it doesn't cost you anything, anyways. Um, it, well, I don't know, it might be a three hundred ninety nine dollar thing, but you know, it's next to nothing. So, anyways, but the, but the thing is, like, in, in in talking to you, like, if you don't, you know, most people just have no idea. They have no idea really where they're at. Um, and there's no downside to going to him and saying, "Hey, can you tell me where I'm at?" Even the credit pools now are soft pools, right? They what are they, a one point, two point pull or something like that? And that doesn't happen for 60 days or something? Well, it, right, so it's a, yeah, it's a mis... Well, here's the thing. Another thing there's, I'm vague about, so let's <laughs> let him clarify that. There's so many different credit scoring models out mm -hmm. there that, you know, people go to Credit Karma or they'll go to My FICO Score. They'll pull their... Or Discover, you know, this is what my score is. And that is different than... Those are consumer credit scores. They're not mortgage credit scores. So right. it, is, it, it is important that, you know, that we do run a, a credit report an actual credit report, not a soft one, because right. in the, it, we can plan, we can help you. If you're not available, if you're not ready to buy now, mm -hmm. we can say, look, I can, I can help you and say, okay, look, you need to do X, Y, and Z, uh, whether it's credit, income, whatever, to get you ready to buy, you know, in, in six months, a year, whenever it may be. I mean, it, it's, it's well worth it. And again, like you were saying, there's no cost or obligation. Yeah. So, but let me ask this because this, this is the question or the, the, the misnomer I think I always come up uh, for. People go, oh, well, if they do that, my, my credit's going to drop 20 points. It does drop when they do inquiries, but it's how much is it actually? I, I mean, I've never really seen to where, I mean, maybe f it's hard for me to see because I don't know what it was before I pulled it. I but I mean, I, I've maybe five points. I mean, they, and then you yeah, can have, and it's a misnomer too, you can have multiple mortgage inquiries in a short period of time and, and we're all going to have the same scores it's it's when you go shopping like you know car yeah, car dealer furniture. car dealer runs like 70 freaking they go to every bank in the world and all of a sudden it looks like you're looking you're trying to get you know 50 loans yeah that's yeah don't go buy new cars if you're looking to buy a house oh yeah yeah <laughs> and for god's sakes once you get under contract don't buy you know don't buy furniture for don't the new house anything. don't buy but I mean, don't pay off a credit card either pay down somebody you want but don't pay it off because i've had that come up with talk before. to your mortgage person before yeah, you pay anything down or that's off. that's it that's right talk you to your be mortgage paying person. down you could be paying something off or, or down and that's not in your best interest that's right exactly so, yeah it's great and that's the other thing too is that you know it's when, whenever you're looking to buy a house or, or sell a house, doesn't really matter. Anything in real estate, make sure that the person that you're dealing with or people that you're dealing with are communicative because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into buying a house or selling a house that isn't something that the normal person would would, would 
know or be expected to know or, or care about. Um, so, and it's particularly true in condos because let's talk about condos real quick. Um, you know, My favorite subject. Hey, listen. <laughs> so, condos. If you are engaged in purchasing or selling a condo right now, it is imperative that you have all of the information available about that condo association at your fingertips or you have the right person that can find it for you. You find out if it's financeable, if it's not. Um, we have a situation right now where um, with one of our buyers, um, unfortunately, we, they, we've been on a contract for 45 days. Um, they just made some insurance changes that they didn't disclose. Um, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But so now they're $6,000 short uh, for the entire building of uh, being eligible for a loan to be, you know, taken, you know, for the, the place to be any, any condo in this community. You mean the reserves or the insurance? On, on the insurance. The insurance, the insurance okay. is $6,000 short of the lender standard. Um, so, and, and, but here's the thing. Uh, it, that sometimes it's unavoidable. In this case, it's unavoidable because they never disclosed that they were going to change any insurance. They never, um, which they're, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter the whole but the point is, and that's, and that's actually being handled because um, the original answer to the inquiry was, oh, well, they're just going to have to use cash. This is from the HOA, from the, or from the condo association, from the board. Uh, so we talked to the seller's agent and said, you might want to tell your seller they wouldn't want to talk to them. And he might want to talk to his neighbors and say that they're, you know, they're about to lose 20% of value on every house in there if they all of a sudden can't Absolutely. take, you know. If it's going to go to a cash-only neighborhood, not a saleable condo, not a saleable condo anymore. Over a six thousand dollars shortfall in insurance, it's kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, so condos are very, very tough right now, and you want to have all the information you can have going in. Um, you know, with the new re recertifications and stuff like that, there's a lot of different rules, and the insurances really are what's mucking it up the most, uh, from what we can see, uh, because the insurance standards seem to change. I would say weekly, but you know, pretty often here lately on what's insurable, what's not, what the insurance levels are. What I mean, it really is. We have you know what I call insurance again going on down here because there's like an Armageddon <laughs> on insurance. Well, it is terrible. Whether you you know single family home, and there there is that there's a negative right right now. We're having uh, insurance issues, and nobody seems to be too worried about really buckling down and fixing the problem. So we'll see what happens. Um, most of the shakeout from that is, is, is over and everybody kind of knows where they're at, but the condos are still going through it. Uh, condo financing has always been tricky and, you know, with, with the uncertainty, it's getting a little bit more tricky. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and what you can do to assure not only buyers, but sellers, because sellers, sellers, you guys need to know, it does you no good, like the seller in this case, to, to, to sell your property, you have a 45 day closing period and then three days before closing, find out that your house, you know, your condo is not going to sell. Um, you know, on the, that's not, it isn't our seller. Um, but it's, you know, it's something that we're hearing about a lot more anyways lately. So we make sure that we vet condo uh, projects um, in, a, in a multitude of ways. And it kind of starts here because he's the easiest one to do the basic vetting with. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, first and foremost, I would say anybody that's looking to buy a condo, um, and if you're coming from out of state, um, of course, you have the freedom to use any lender you want, but mm -hmm. it's imperative that you use or speak to a, a Florida mortgage company or lender that specifically does deals with condos down here. Yeah, don't use an out-of-state lender. Let me tell you, they don't know. They just don't know. I'm sorry. Like with a regular house, Rocket Mortgage and stuff like that, oh, you're a Rocket Mortgage partner thing. Where that's a different story. But let's say, let's say in general terms, any of these big mortgage companies that are nationwide mortgage companies, but they don't specifically deal with Florida, and they don't specifically have a Florida-based operation with condos, they're, they're just guessing at best. They have no idea. So I'm that's sorry. right. And they, no, no, it's okay. They, and they don't have a process. Their process is, you know, kind of used to what they do within their con the condos in the state that they're a part of, you know, but in Florida, uh, what we basically do is, is first and foremost is we need to get a copy of the budget for that year. So this year, 2023, get a copy of the budget. We need to see what kind of reserves that are allocated on an annual basis. That will help us determine if the buyer can put down Five percent, ten percent, or if they don't have reserves, they would have to put down twenty-five percent or more 
if it's an owner occupied primary residence versus second home investment, which is could be 30%. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's number one. Number two is, is are there any pending, are there any assessments going on? Are they doing uh, any, any uh, repairs to the building? Okay. Cause you do run into that situation. Kind of project the, issues. Correct. And then are there, is there any pending litigation going on in the building? <clears throat> that's another big thing. Okay, litigation, we can finance with litigation, but if it's litigation that are, that's due to construct, uh, uh, structural issues, suing a contractor or contractors right. or vice versa, there you're going to run into a dead end in terms of getting financing. So you've got to try to get that information up front. Right, and that's, and that's actually where, the, where this one, where we have the buyer, where, we, where everybody ran into the problems because it's a condo project thing. And it wasn't that they didn't disclose about changing the insurance. They didn't disclose the condo project. When they started the condo project, the insurance changed. Because they didn't tell anybody, and then the insurance company found out about the improvement project that they were doing. Say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, you know, and that's that's where all this stuff got hooked up, mixed up. So yeah, that is huge. Um, and and the fact that that you know the lender, you know, or at least some lenders, and it's not all lenders for sure. Let's say our lender, Andrew Fishman, um, can do that for you. That really saves everybody a lot of hassle. And you know, the, the worst thing for me that I could ever do is take somebody out. They fall in love with the property, and we can't buy it for them because of something like this. I mean, that's you know, it does nobody any good. It's worse than worthless. It's counterproductive, and then you know, everybody's you know upset about it, and that you know that's not the business we're in. So we want to make sure that we're going in with the correct information, setting the expectation correctly, um, you know, for our purchaser, and that's a huge part of it. Um, we do things too, where you know, you would give us. Uh, I always recommend my agents, and you know. Send me the address of the property or the building. Let me do. Let me see what kind of due diligence I can do up front. Yeah, and that goes for for sellers as well as buyers. If you're a listing agent or a buyer's agent, this is great because you can you can know if the condo is already approved. If it's not, if it's on an unavailable list, which means you can't get financing yep. on it. Yep. Um, so these type of things you know up front when you're speaking with you know either client and, or seller. And buyer. some of these condos, like the one, I just listed a place uh, down in uh, West Palm here. It's a 55 in order. They have their own mandated rules. The 30% rule in, in oh, the yeah. condo. Also, it isn't because they don't have reserves. They have huge reserves. It isn't because they have great reserves. But they're like on the other end of the spectrum where the, the board there has decided we're going to make sure we're super flush. We don't have any issues. Um, you could buy a place cash in there. You still have to prove that you make, you know, X amount of dollars a year and all these sort of things. And they're super Price tight on requirements it. too. They have some of them on, on these condos. No, no, they, yeah. no, they, 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 this one does the median average of Florida, which they're saying is 693 right really? now, which I think that's whatever. I have ones with an income where you have to yeah. show income. Yeah. On certain condos. You have to show income. In, even if you buy it cash, you still have to show income. So yeah. this, listen, if you're, if you're somebody that really likes and is, and it's important to you and you get that little cocoon feeling, if, if people are really on top and like like really on top of all that stuff, it's great. Um, the, their reserves are like insane. They've got like, you know, eight years worth of full reserves and that's including, you know, capital project. Now you'll never get an assessment there, which is awesome. Um, which that's a whole other thing we got, you know, talk about when you're talking about condos, you know, you want to make sure you know the roof age and things like that because next thing you know, you get in there and you're there for a year and all of a sudden they go, oh, well, we're now we got to do the roofs and there's going to be an assessment because we don't have enough reserves. So anyways, condo buying is very complex and very, very, you know, you need you just need to make sure you know exactly what's going on uh, with the condo. Now, that being said, they're awesome because you, not only do you share a lot of the expense, so you're going to have lower expenses overall when you're looking at most condo situations, but they're, you know, they're very affordable compared to trying to buy a house or even a townhouse and stuff like that. So there are a bunch of upsides uh, if you want to live on the beach, condos, unless you're a multi, 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 multi millionaire, condos is the only way you're going to do it. And there's condos out there where you can still live on the beach for, you know, half a million dollars. Um, they're starting to get more, more few and far between, but that's the only way you're going to do it if you actually want to live on the beach. That's true. So it's not that they're, you know, I'm saying don't buy condos. There's still a lot of great reasons to buy them. Just make sure you're doing your homework and you know what's going on with that facility. And, and once again, same thing with sellers. Because the last thing we want to do is have our sellers sell their condo, expect that it's going to close, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, you know, a week or so before closing, we go, oh, well, this is this is happening. It won't, and it's always a week or so before closing. I'm not saying that everybody puts everything to the side until they really have to get to it, but it's kind of like the it way happens. it works in this business sometimes. <laughs> uh, so we want to make sure that, our, once again, our expectation is set correctly for our customers, whether you're buying or selling. And right here is the first sort of line of, you know, vetting. Um, that we have on that. Um, well, I mean, we could talk about this all day long, obviously. And, and listen, this is going to, I think this is going to become sort of a regular 
uh, episodic thing because, you know, I do get a lot of questions about it. You know, the podcast is really more about living in South Florida and not about real estate, but those people that do have questions about real estate, they have them for a reason, right? And, you know, getting the information out to you is part of my job as well as a realtor. Um, you know, once again, I, you know, listen, I lose a lot of my, uh, business because I won't lie to people about things. I won't tell them, you know, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I mean, that's my job in my mind and I built a successful business doing it is get, setting the expectation once again, correctly with you, letting you know what's actually going on and helping you navigate and make the best decision possible for yourself, whether you're buying or selling, going through the process. Um, you know, if you're somebody that wants to come up and you, know, you think your house is worth $750,000 and it's only worth probably six hundred or something, I'm not going to be your guy. Um, you know, uh, if there's, I don't know, there's a lot of, a lot of different reasons. But anyways, uh, we're going to keep coming out and telling you this stuff. Um, we'll probably do it monthly, I think. That's, you know, keep everybody updated and whatnot. If you have specific questions, um, you know, Chala again is going to have the, I don't know, questions thing, whatever she's going to make up for that. Uh, send them in to us. We'll get to them on our next podcast. If it's an urgent question, you can obviously call me direct or call Andrew direct. His information will be there. My information will be there. Um, and we look forward to seeing you here in South Florida soon. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Living in South Florida Does Not Suck. Please do subscribe with the notification bell on. If you liked today's guest, you can also get more information about them right here. Like magic, it will appear. Uh, anyways, we love having you here. We love having your friends here. Shout it out from the rooftops. Like us on Facebook. Share it with your friends. We'll see you soon here in beautiful, sunny South Florida.